Welcome sa kayong lahat. Welcome to Pinoy Bounce. I hope you guys are doing amazing. I'm your host for tonight, Marky Mark. Over here on my left side, we got Ingrid May. How you feeling? Good. Awesome. Over there on the <laughs> other side of the court, we got King James. How you feeling on the other I'm side there? I'm feeling good in Woo! the neighborhood. <laughs> well, already here. James, let's start off with some fun facts on your hand. Uh, today's NBA fun fact is all about Terrence Davis. Terrence Davis was a great football player back in high school. They, were offered, they offered him 20 Division I scholarship to play football, but instead he declined all of it and played basketball instead for Ole Miss University. After that, everything was, uh, the rest is history, and he played for, for Toronto Raptors as an undrafted rookie. Terrence Davis is probably going to be the dark horse for the next two years for the Toronto Raptors. So my question to you guys is, who is the dark horse for the East Coast and the West Coast? Is it Miami Heat and Phoenix Suns or Raptors? What do you guys think? Oh, let's start with the East. Uh, Miami for sure, I see. Like, we totally didn't, they weren't even in discussion when we talked about our dark horses when it came to I didn't see for you. their come up and everything. So, like, mm -hmm. if you look at their lineup, it's Butler, it's going to be Drogic, it's um, Tyler Hero, Bam, um, who else is there? That's a deep team. It is a deep team with Justice Winslow and everything. Yeah. And we're not, we're, speaking of which, with Terrence Davis as, like, for the Raptors, dark, like, maybe dark horse, Kendrick Nunn. Where did this guy come from? <laughs> Undrafted. Back in 2018, comes up out of nowhere and now averages about 18 points, three assists, two rebounds, and over 45% field goal percentage. Like, who would have thought that he would start over a player like Dragic, who's been a proven starter in the NBA, who's played for Slovenia and one of their star players, and now coming as a backup for a guy who was undrafted. And I think what was surprisingly about Miami is how quickly they gelled together. Yeah. And, and the fact that they're deep. And, and I think Butler hasn't fully been acclimated into the team yet. I think he's going to take some time because just the way his personality is and just the way he plays, he, he's going to challenge everybody in that, in, the, in that locker room and say, do you even, how badly do you want to win? How badly do you want to make it far into, this, into, into the game, the postseason? Yeah. And, and it's good to have that with, with young players like Bam, Tyler Hero, Nunn. Bam is stepping up as well now that Hassan Whiteside has gone went and moved to mm -hmm. Portland, right? So mm -hmm. I just feel like he's coming up. He's going to be probably one of the best. He's one of the best centers in the East, mind you. So mm -hmm. I feel like coming for, for them. I see a little bit of uh, I see a little bit of Draymond Green in this game where mm -hmm. he can do a little bit of everything. He doesn't need a ball in his hand, but he can make plays. That's something that I think Alex, Eric Spolstra has kind of exploited in terms of like, hey, this guy can bring up the ball after a rebound. And that's kind of the same thing that he did with Justice Winslow where this guy was a power forward with some guard skills and with some passing ability. And, and Eric Spolster has fully really made the most out of what he had. And that's something that I think he's been so underrated about because yeah. he's been blessed with Dwayne Wade. He's been blessed with Chris Bosh and, and, and LeBron when throughout James the time. At one point, yeah. And so he was so underrated as a coach. No one, people didn't realize how much effort or skill it takes to coach a team like that with that much talent and now that he's doesn't have as much he's superstar now bringing out of them which is good mm -hmm. right so i see that i agree in that uh, what about the west like where do you feel the phoenix suns come kind of comes into the play it's just like they do have the good players but we just they're being overshadowed by so many of the other star players right so you have mm -hmm. like devin booker mm -hmm. you know mikhail bridges ricky rubio D uh check diallo frank kaminsky deandre mm -hmm. aiden who's you know unfortunate sus unfortunately of your suspended fantasy team. <laughs> on my fantasy team suspended yeah. for 25 games because of you know drugs and everything so it's, it's unfortunate it's very unfortunate but like he already brought like even his first home like first home opener when they won he dominated he dominated it so i'm yeah. just like, waiting for him in december for him to get back and dominate it again yeah. even though like he is sitting out you know uh frank commits kaminsky aaron baines they're they're aaron bringing up baines yeah they're really bringing it up there so yeah. i mean and even before, like, they didn't have that much usage for, like, Kelly Oubre Jr. Mm. But now he has so much usage now. I think now, he's been my surprise this season. Yeah, uh, along, uh, One of my, in terms of his skill set, he wasn't fully utilized when he was in Washington. And I feel like here he has a role. And to be that second option to Devin Booker has been really helpful in, just in his development. And I think, to me, Devin Booker is one of those kind of star that he was, a, like, a late pick. He was 13, 14 pick for the draft and he kind of just knew he was overshadowed too by because he was playing under um ben simmons. ben simmons he was playing under buddy healed yeah which we'll talk to him next yeah. Time, yeah so i think he's a good super set to surround yourself with because he's willing to grow and willing to adjust his game because he was a scorer yep and now he's kind of facilitating the basketball he's kind of becoming that 
um, facilitator and the main focal point of an offense that now has a structure and a, and a direction, which is something that they never had as a Phoenix Sun organization. So I like where these two are, these two teams like Miami and Phoenix are going. And I think we both agree that they were the really dark horse team for both. Uh, and East they and are West. playing tonight, so we will see who will, dominate, who will dominate, who's yeah. a better dark horse, if anything. Yeah. What do you think, James? What I think about the Phoenix Suns is that Monty Williams used to coach for, for the Sixers, who handled ben, ben Simmons. And when he went to the Phoenix Suns, he knows exactly what to do for Ricky Rubio. So that's the, another big factor. And Devin Booker has been nice. Yeah, 14 out of 17. and scored like 22 points. But yeah, so what do you guys think about Luca and, um, and Trey Young? Because uh, talking about the young core of Phoenix Suns, let's talk about the young core for Atlanta Hawks and young core for, for Mavericks. What do you guys think? Another East and West. <laughs> Ooh, I know you're a big fan of Luca too. I'm a huge fan of Luka yeah. Doncic and everything. But like you're comparing a big guy to a small guy, right? And they were both... But they play the same position. They do, yes. Sense. But I feel like um, Luca has more strength and like he's less injury prone mm -hmm. as compared to Trey Young. Um, you know, they were head to head when it came to rookie of the year last year, right? But Luca just dominated all year. Too. This right. year, the, who's, who do you think has been more impressive? Because I do see Lucas having a, his balling out this season. I do think Trey has been balling out with less talent around him. He is. So that's the thing. He's carrying a team, whereas with Luca, he can be able to support the team you know mm -hmm. what i mean so i just feel like luca has the he has the tools he has the players for it whereas you know you have whereas with trey it's like you have to give him the ball for it and everything mm -hmm. like it's hard for him to like with the with the, with the pick and rolls it was hard for him with the with, he's more of a catch and go like catch and shoot kind of guy right okay. so if you switch both guys it. if you switch let's say if you put trey into dallas mavericks right now and they put uh, luca into atlanta hawks who would make that team better i think luca oh so you think Atlanta I think just Luca can just be able to bring that out of everybody, yeah. whereas mm -hmm. with Trey. I do see that, and yeah. I think that if Because Trey is more of that one-man show. He reminds me of someone that has a Steph Curry kind of range, but plays more like Steve Nash, in the yes. sense of that he would still rather pass first yeah. and get everybody involved, but then he can get his own buckets, whereas I think with Luca. He just can get any shots that he wants with any guard, and exactly, uh, he right? plays around. And <laughs> he, he finds just... the open, right? He mm -hmm. finds the open opportunity for it, mm -hmm. right? So even like with you know with Porzingis on his team, Delon Wright, um, who else is there that is on that team too? There's just mm -hmm. so much that he can be able to develop opportunity with them too, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, well, the the only thing is that I've just been really impressed with both of these sophomores, and I think they're going to be the franchise player for both organizations. And that's all we have, guys, for NBA topics. To end it off, we got James with some Saturday night. Uh, today's stat with James goes to John Starks. John Starks has the most points as an undrafted player in the NBA. He scored 10,829 points. After the break, we're going to talk about the player highlight. So tune in.